Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Shelley Ziegler, and today we're going to talk about audiobooks, one of my most favorite things to talk about. I feel very privileged that I get to discuss audiobooks with you all today. Um, again, my name is Shelley Ziegler, and I'm a library consultant here at the Mississippi Library Commission. So a little bit about me, here's a little picture of me with my little headphones on because I, uh, I do like to listen to books when, um, when I have some downtime. Um, I am a library consultant. Um, I have been a library consultant here at MLC for um, about three years. Prior to that, um, I was director of the Talking Book Library Services. Um, so overall, I've been here at MLC for um, almost um, 10 years now. So uh, as I've said before, I adore audiobooks. Uh, I am a freelance writer on the side. I'm an audiobook reviewer for Booklist. Um, so it makes sense that I would want to talk about audiobooks. Um, in my reading life, my personal reading life, about 50% of my reading is audio. Um, it varies from month to month. Sometimes I do a little more audio, sometimes I do a little more print. It just, it just depends. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share um, a little bit about podcasts as well because you know they're also in the listening genre. But um, just a few that I love, and I do love listening to podcasts. Um, one that I, probably my most favorite is called You're Wrong About. And it's, um, it's kind of hard to sum up, but it's all about things in history, people in history, people in pop culture that you think you know, you think you know their story, but you probably maybe didn't quite understand. Um, and it's very, um, it's funny, but it's very informative. Um, this American Life has been out and around forever. Um, I love it. I have been a listener for many, many years. Um, I also like Office Ladies. It has, um, it's been a podcast now for, a couple years now. Um, and then I would have to mention MLC Stacks and Stories, of course. And then you must remember this is really a neat podcast. It kind of talks about things that happened in the 20th century. And once again, it's about kind of how you think you know about what happened and some of the famous people in the 20th century. We're talking um, Charles Manson um, and maybe you don't know the full story. So anyway, so that's just a little bit about me. So a little bit more about, because it's all going to be about audiobooks. Um, a little bit more, here are some myths about audiobooks. Some people think that um, audiobooks are, they're too hard to follow. I think that they're listening to them, that um, they can't really engage with them, they can't follow the book. It's not necessarily true. They think that listening to a book is considered cheating. Um, that is not true. They think that narrators are annoying, they're boring. Um, that is not true also. Uh, I will say that a narrator, and I say this a lot, a narrator can make or break a book. So I'm not saying every narrator out there is wonderful, but most narrators do it for a living or at least for a side job. A lot of narrators are actually, um, they're actors. And so they're, act, they're giving a performance. So their job is to entertain you with their narration. So they are the opposite of annoying or boring. However, some people, when they're listening to a book, they don't like, for example, there are some people who don't like to listen to women's voices. 
I'm just using that for example. Um, maybe they don't like a very high-pitched woman's voice, so they prefer male narrators, and that's fine. Everyone has their own preference. So they would steer towards um, male narrators. Um, so you kind of have to find what works for you. Um, and then another myth is that real readers don't listen to audiobooks. And with that, I say that when you're listening to an audiobook, you are reading a book. It is not just listening. Um, a couple more things I want to say before I get into it a little bit more is that there was um, a study done by the Edison Research Natural Na natural national survey and that they did a study about um, people who do um, read audiobooks and that um, listening to audiobooks has gone up in um, 2020 where it used to be approximately about 8.1 books per person in um, 2020 and that went up from in 2019 it was about 6.8 books per person and can you guess what the most popular genre of audiobooks are it's pretty obvious it is mystery thrillers and suspense i thought it was pretty obvious and those are actually my most favorite genres as well <laughs> know what that says. And audiobooks are most popular with adults age 30 to 49. Doesn't mean that everyone can enjoy them. I'm just, that just happens to be who they are most popular with. So. Audiobooks also are, they have their own awards and they're called the Audi Awards. The Audio Awards, they recognize the most outstanding audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. They, um, they have been around in the audiobook industry since 1996. I have on here a web link for you if you'd like to go and find more about the Audio Awards. On here, I have given you the 2021 um, Audi Award winners. However, I want you to know that these are just, this is a small portion of the winners. There is a very large, cat. the, the, the categories for winners are, is massive. They have all kinds, they have best sci-fi, they, I mean, they have all kinds, like best multi-narrators. I just picked a few for you just to show you an example. So the um, best 2021 best male narrator was for the autobiography of Malcolm X and it was performed by Lawrence Fishburne who is an actor. You're going to notice that and I'm going to say it a lot that a lot of audiobooks are performed by well-known actors or people who narrate audiobooks kind of as a side job um, and they're, they're actors as well. Um, the 2021 audiobook of the year is Piranesi and it is performed by another British actor and it is Chudatel Egeo 4 and he has he's been in a lot of stuff and I wish I can't tell you right off the top of my head but he's one of my favorite actors I love his voice and I, I would listen to anything he narrates um, so uh, that one for the best audiobook of the year and then for the best female narrator it is the city we became and the narrator is Robin Miles. So I just wanted to tell you about the Audi Awards because a lot of people don't know about them. Audiobooks are pretty, pretty important. And let's talk about celebrity narrated audiobooks. And let me just take a drink of water here. So last year, 
Jessica Simpson came out with Open Book and it became wildly popular. And she narrated her own book. Most, most celebrities who write a memoir will narrate their own book. And um, she did a really good job. It was a very good book. It's very interesting. Um, and then Green Lights came out by Matthew McConaughey. And it has become immensely popular as well. But you will also see there's been a great increase in the number of celebrities who are narrating books that are not memoirs. Um, one of my favorites is The Dutch House by Anne Patchett, and it was narrated by Tom Hanks. And on a lot of listservs and Facebook groups, I, I read a lot of people say, um, you know, this is a wonderful book. Um, if you're going to read it, listen to the audiobook because Tom Hanks literally took it to another level. He was amazing. And if you don't know, Tom Hanks is also an author unto himself. So he, um, he has some street cred there as well. And then one of my favorites, um, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, Sissy Spacek read um, uh, an, an audio version of it. And I am just fell in love with it all over again. So there has been a trend where more and more celebrities are reading narrating. I'll, I'll tend to use those terms interchangeably. Um, classic. So you're going to see more um, Jane Austen's and Bronte's narrated by celebrities. And I kind of like that because it's kind of, it's bringing people um, who would not normally read those books um, back into the fold and listening to those books and reading those books again. So um, that's why I wanted to talk about celebrity narrators here. So now I'm going to talk to you about some books that have come out. They have wonderful narrators. Um, they would be, these are all great titles to highlight in your collection. They would be good to have in print, um, in audio format, maybe highlight in a book club. It's always great when you have a book club and you can offer the print as well as the audio because people have definite preferences. So I'm going to start with my favorite which is called Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Riley Sager um, is, a, is a man, and a lot of people thought that he was female because most of his characters, his main characters, have always been female, and he writes them so well, but he is a male. And um, I, I will say this book does not come out until June 29th. I was lucky enough to get an um, advanced audio copy of this book. And it, um, it is set in the 1990s. And it is, the entire book is set over one night. And it's about this girl. And she is trying to find um, someone to give her a ride home from college. She's actually leaving college. She's leaving early. And she's trying to get home. And the whole night, so she gets a ride from a stranger. And again, I try, I'm gonna try not to say too much. She gets a ride from a stranger. And the whole time she's trying to figure out, is this person who he says that he is? Because along the way, she's finding out information that he may not be who he says he is. And is she in a very dangerous situation? And I know a lot of people say, oh, I was on the edge of my seat. 
I was on the edge of my seat and sick to my stomach. I had to find out and it does not end the way you think. And it is fabulous. So um, all of Riley Sager's books have been well received from the very first one of Final Girls, which came out in 2017. But um, definitely this is one you're going to want. Survive the Night. Okay. And this is another one that um, is getting a lot of PR because it's in the Reese Witherspoon Book Club. And that always brings up um, the notoriety. Um, so it's called The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. And um, a little backstory is that um, it's about a woman named Hannah and her husband disappears. But she, he leaves her a note before he disappears. And the last thing he says in his note is, quote unquote, protect her. And she derives that what he's meaning is, well, what she thinks he means is that he wants her to protect his 16-year-old daughter, Bailey, which is her stepdaughter. Um, and along the way in the book, we discover that her husband, Owen, has a past that is not what he said it was. And the whole book is about figuring out who he was. He's charged with this horrible crime. Is he innocent? Is he not? Um, this author also wrote um, 800 Grapes, which, which did re really well, which is a really good book. Um, has a, a really good narrator who I don't think I'd heard before, but she does a very good job. Um, so you're going to have a lot of people who are going to want um, this book, um, not only because of the Reese Witherspoon factor, but just because it's um, it's very well written and um, and because the author is well known. All right. Now we've got The Maidens, and it's by um, Alex Michaelades. And, well, that's how I say it. And uh, Alex Michaelades also wrote The Silent Patient, which did very well. It's a, that was a psychological thriller. Um, this book has done very well so far. A lot of people are talking about it. There is a little free library campaign for this book, actually, where the um, where the um, publisher was encouraging people who got um, who who had uh, advanced copies of this book that after they read them that they wanted them to put them in little free libraries as, as soon as they possibly could. So they're really trying to get word out about this book, but. Um, so, so this is um, th this is a book that is set on a small campus, a small university campus. So, if you like those types of books, and it's about um, there's this professor named Edward Fosca, and he's a Greek professor, and he's very well loved, especially by the female students and especially by this group of female students, and they are called the Maidens. But what happens is one day a girl is killed and a woman named Mariana, who is also a therapist, um, her, her niece happens to go to this school and she becomes fixated on Edward Fosca and she is positive that he is responsible for the death of this student. So it is all about her trying to, you know, um, get him convicted and then is he, re you know, is he really responsible and what the heck are these maidens and what do they do, um, you know, what's their relationship with this professor? Is it, you know, is it kosher? Um, 
it's it's a great book. A lot of people are talking about it. Um, has two narrators, which I I always love books with more than one narrator. It makes it feel like more of a performance piece. Um, so recommend that one. All right. And then we have one last stop. Um, this one comes out on June 1st, which is just next week. Um, and it is such a fun book. It is a rom-com with time travel. <laughs> um, and you don't hear much about those. But the author is also um, the author of a po another popular rom-com book called Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, so this is a book about a girl named August, and August moves to Brooklyn. And she's kind of, you know, not, you know, you know, it's hard when you're in a new city and not fitting in. And anyway, so she rides a subway and she meets this woman named Jane, and she immediately falls for Jane. She just, I mean, almost love at first sight. And so she continues to see Jane on this on this particular subway line, and but things are kind of weird, you know. Jane dresses a little differently. Um, she doesn't want to make plans outside of the subway, and without again giving too much away, we discover that Jane is actually stuck in the 1970s on this subway line and this is so clever such a clever book and it's all about how are we going to manage this <laughs> how are we going to get jane out of the 70s or is august going to go to the 70s and stay in the 70s um it's just really fun um i think you'll enjoy it if you like those kind of books and then I have to throw in here Concrete Rose by Jackson's own Angie Thomas. And it is by, um, it is narrated by Dion Graham, who is an actor. Um, like I said, that's going to happen a lot. This is a prequel to The Hate You Give. Um, so there's already tons of interest in this. But I wanted to put this in here because it's so well done. And the father in The Hate You Give, um, Maverick, some people call him Mav, I think for short, he was such a strong figure in The Hate You Give that um, Angie, you know, felt like he needed, we needed to know his story, his backstory. So this is the story of him as a teenager. Um, so it's very, it's, very compelling, very good, very well done, and the performance that Dion Graham gives is amazing. So um, I think especially in Mississippi because um, Angie Thomas is from here, is it's very, very popular. And this is one that I recently listened to and it is called The Plot by Jean Hamp Korolitz. Um, she is known, the author, she also wrote a book called um, You Should Have Known. You Should Have Known was also recently made into an HBO miniseries called The Undoing with Nicole Kidman. Um, just a little sidebar there of information. So she's um she's a very popular author, but um this is a this is an interesting um, plot <laughs> um, because I've never I've never read a book like this before that had this type of plot. So basically, what you have is you have a teacher and he works in a small community college and. At one time, apparently, he was successful and he wrote a book that did well. And then 
what happens a lot with a lot of authors and they have kind of a one hit wonder, you know, and he has not been able to write since then. But he has this student who's kind of cocky and kind of a jerk. And so he's um, teaching this course on writing. And this, um, this student is like, well, I've got the perfect plot and I don't think you can teach writing. And it's kind of like, why are you even in the course? Um, so, and he almost won't talk about the plot. He, he kind of keeps it to himself. And one day he starts telling the teacher a little bit about the plot, but as the reader, you don't get to hear what the plot is. You do eventually, but it's spoon fed to you slowly. Um, so, and the teacher is blown away. He's like, that it's an amazing plot and that it's going to do well. They're going to, this student is like, I'm going to be on Oprah. You know, I, they're going to make a movie out of this. Everyone's going to talk about it. I mean, this guy is very, very confident. Um, so a couple years go by, you know, things happen. So this teacher kind of waits and waits for this book to come out and it never comes out. And he's like, well, why didn't the guy write this book that was going to be so great? And he looks him up online on social media and he finds out that he died. And he, I'm not giving too much weight because this happens all in the beginning. So what do you think the guy does? He kind of steals his plot and he writes the book and he becomes everything that the student said, very successful. Everyone wants something to do with him. Steven Spielberg is gonna make a movie out of it. And it's amazing. And we, as the reader, we still don't know what the plot is. And you're like, what is this amazing plot? And slowly, like every other chapter, you are spoon fed a little bit of the plot until by the end of the book, you find out about this amazing plot. It is pretty cool, but there's a twist and the, this guy is always afraid of getting caught. He thinks someone else out there knows about this plot. So you will have to read the book to find out whether he gets caught. <laughs> I'll leave it there. It's so good. Malibu Rising, okay, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Most of you know Taylor Jenkins Reid from Daisy Jones and the Six, or the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Those were both wildly popular. Um, this, of course, this comes out June 1st. Um, I have to say that this is narrated by my favorite narrator. Julia Whalen. Julia Whalen has narrated over 400 audiobooks. And the reason, the way she became my favorite narrator was just that I just, as I've, I've been, I've been listening and reading audiobooks for many, many years, for like 20 years. And I just slowly noticed that whenever whenever I really liked a book and I really connected to it, she was the narrator. So um, as you read audiobooks, you'll find, you'll find your narrator. So Julia Whalen is my person. Um, this book is about a, it's about a famous family and it's about one day and it's the, it's kind of the end of the summer bash and they are, they're all like, surfers and they like to do, you know, surfing things. It's obviously not my jam. Um, the, the main character, Nina, she's kind of like, and they're, and they're getting ready to have this big party. Okay. And Nina is keeping a big, a big secret, but so are her um, siblings. So, you can kind of, I hate to use the, the Kardashians as a 
as an example, but I will. So you can kind of think of them as the surfing Kardashians, but they all are keeping secrets. And at the end of the day, everyone has secrets revealed and it's, um, it's, it's, it'll, it's gonna be a very popular book, not only because of the author, but because it's it's being released in the summertime and it's a very summery type of book. So um, it's a fun book too. All right. And then my last book, it's called The Women of Chateau Lafayette um, by Stephanie Dre. This has um, multiple narrators. I think it has at least three narrators. Um, and again, I love when books have more than one narrator. Um, so World War II historical fiction has just hit the roof. So popular. I mean, um, especially if women are involved. And most of the covers, you might have noticed, you usually see the back of women's heads or the back of children's heads and they're usually walking away. That's kind of a, that's kind of a thing now. Like you, they don't show their face. I kind of hope they do something about that because it's kind of getting old. But um, on this one, luckily you actually see the side of them. You don't actually, it's not just the back of their head. Um, but anyway, so this is about three different women's stories in three different time periods, but it's all, they're all taking place at the same location. What I like about this book is that those three stories are woven together, but I will caution you that if you read this book, this is something you're going to have to um, be patient with. It does pay off, but the audiobook is over 23 hours. So <laughs> it pays off, but it's not a quick read, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. This has been a highly anticipated book, um, but it is now out and um, it is, it is one that um, a lot of your historical fiction readers are going to be running to. So there you go. So that is what I have today about audiobooks. Um, if you have comments or questions or you want to disagree with me about audiobooks, that's all. That's great. <laughs> um, this is my phone number and my email address. And um, I love to hear from you. Um, or, or if you have any suggestions about future webinars that you would like to see us have here at the Library Commission, um, please let please please let us know, and um, that helps us deliver better content. So thank you so much for listening to me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.